Welcome to The Decision from Nashville EO, where you will hear the rest of the story after tough decisions were made by entrepreneurs who faced adversity and lived to tell about it. Hi, Robert Hartline here with Eric Jackson for The Decision. Today, we have a special guest, the first interview of the Nashville EO, The Decision podcast, JJ Rosen. How are you, my friend? I'm doing good. Thank you guys for having me. I'm excited to have you along the board because you've been here uh, a long time in EO. Yeah, I think it's been, uh, I think it's been about 12 years or so um, when I, I first joined EO and a friend of mine, um, who I went to school with, uh, you guys probably know him as Tim Osgener, but he was Timmy Osgener when we were little kids. <laughs> uh, he uh, uh, kept on kind of uh, twisting my arm saying, oh, you need to join this. It's really, really uh, helpful. And it's kind of different than other groups. Um, and he explained a little bit about the uh, uh, Gestalt kind of method and the, the sharing lessons learned as opposed to advice. Um, and I was actually, um, a psychology major in college where we learned in counseling, never to give advice, just to simply help someone kind of reflect back and learn for themselves what their best path is. And so that kind of clicked with me. And so that's how I ended up joining EO. So take me back to that time in your business. Like what was the business and how were you, cause I found that for me, I've, I was, I joined EO in a special time in the business and I needed help. And was that like that for you when you joined? Um, not, not really, but, um, I think I, I, I probably did need help, but, but wasn't really aware of it. Um, so <laughs> the, uh, the business itself, um, I got into this right out of college. So, um, in 1992, uh, and, I wasn't really planning on uh, uh, building a business or anything at the time. Um, I was originally interested, uh, like I said, I'm, my major in psychology, I was going to work for a couple of years or maybe just even a year, um, try to save up some money and go back to grad school in psychology. So that was my original plan. And then I discovered in that year that I just loved computers, all things tech. And I got deep into um both the IT side, setting up networks and um, troubleshooting things, and the programming side, um, which both of which I was surprised that I was able to learn because I, I didn't feel like I was a natural with that. Uh, but it just kind of clicked, and I started just uh, living and breathing it. And so um, the original vision I had for the business, um, uh, we were talking a little bit earlier um, about uh, the, the, the music business and recording. Um, my, my dad, um, had a company, maybe like a six or seven person company all throughout like the seventies and eighties into the nineties. And, um, he was a recording engineer, um, primarily for live concerts and radio shows and, and TV. And he was both the, um, the engineer doing the actual work and the business person. And so that's kind of what I knew. And I imagined myself as just that, just, I just grew up that way. Like, Oh, I'll get real good at a skill the best I can get. Um, and then I'll kind of have my own little small business and I'll be both the, uh, I'll try to combine the business skills and a tech skill or a talent. So that was kind of the norm for me. And so I was cranking away doing that and, um, uh, not unhappy. I really liked doing the tech side and I was violating the e-myth you know, where I was working uh, deep um, in the business rather than on it. But I never had even really heard of the e-myth at the time. And so, um, so there was nothing, there was no, uh, you know, uh, issues I saw um, in terms of I was, you know, the business was going well. The dot-com thing kind of helped us a lot and kind of uh, pushed us uh, and, and pushed me to hire more people. But I was still cranking away doing all the hands-on work. Um, and so... Um, in hindsight, um, there was, that was a challenge that I was, uh, you know, deep into that and, um, and, you know, probably a better ROI in my time 
which I learned from EO was to, to focus a bit more on the business side. Um, although I, I, um, it, that took a bit cause I, I, I like the tech part and, you know, I like both really, but, um, but yeah, I was, uh, when I joined EO, um, it was kind of on a, on a whim and then, uh, quickly I started kind of realizing, okay, there is some things that, you know, I, that would change the way we're working and change my life and all that type of stuff. And what's the name of the, your business now? Um, it's called Atiba. So, uh, A-T-I-B-A. And, um, it was kind of funny. So when I first got started and I've gotten to be very, very old, um, it was before, uh, really the, the internet was around, but it was before the, it was something that was popular and, you know, dot com type stuff. And so I had this like real long name that I just made up. Um, and you know, it, and for the first few years, it was just me anyway. So there's no employees or anything like that. I was just a a computer consultant was sort of the, 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 the job title. Like if you looked it up in the yellow pages, that's kind of what I, I was. And so, um, you might have to explain what the yellow pages are to some of our audience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I've gotten very, very old here. I don't know if Eric, we might be close to the same age. But, we are. <laughs> um, so, um, um, anyways, uh, the name Atiba, um, um, it's weird. If anybody's ever tried to get a domain name, um, uh, you know, now, like if you go on to GoDaddy or whichever, you know, it's, it's very, very hard. Like everything's taken. And oddly enough, even back in the early nineties, um, most things that were tech oriented, um, were already reserved. And so I would, you know, kind of get home at night and I'd type in every possible name, um, and try to, uh, you know, find a, I, I thought I needed a shorter name, a unique dom domain name, you know, mainly just for, for marketing, um, to kind of rename the business. And I would love to say that, uh, our name was some kind of, uh, something done with, with a lot of purpose that, that had a lot of meaning. Um, but, um, I'd been at a, a, a Vanderbilt basketball game and the, <laughs> the point guard, his name, uh, his first name was Atiba. <laughs> And I got home that night and I'm doing my typing and I just spent like hours and hours and hours trying to find a name. And so I started just making up words and then I just thought, I thought his name sounded kind of cool. So I typed that in and it was available. And then, um, and then I looked it up on, at the time, I believe it was Yahoo. <laughs> and, um, I just typed it in there and, um, it just, by pure chance happened to, uh, in, in Swahili, it means one of understanding. So I sort of thought, well, the stars have be. aligned. It's meant to be. It's yeah. available. Does, yeah. he, does he, does he have any uh, royalties coming his way or anything? You know, um, I ran into him one time, like at a restaurant or something like long time ago. <laughs> he blew like, his uh, mind. He's like, what? And I was especially my business card and I was like, Hey, like, um, you know, I, your, your name inspired the name of our company. And he was laughing. Um, and it was kind of fun. Uh, it's funny how these things work out sometimes. Yeah. 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 So um, now your business hasn't always been fantastic. <laughs> There's been challenges in the business. And the whole purpose of the Decision Podcast is to shine the light on a struggle that we had sometime in our business that we needed to make some sort of decision where you would needed to have something for, to change or you needed to change and you went to your forum for some help. Yes. And uh, so we're curious here, uh, what kind of struggle did you have that you can recall? Yeah. So, um, of course, like all of us, um, I think it's universal in, um, in business, and especially, I think, small, medium business. Um, when you're a, a founder or the owner, um, you know, there's a lot of struggles that, that we all have. Um, and um, one good thing, um, one helpful thing, um, I don't know if it's good, but um, I learned kind of quickly in my forum is that some of the struggles um, or a big chunk of them are, are kind of universal. Like they're the same throughout, like everyone, you know, at some point or another um, has a client they're, they're uh, struggling with or has an employee that they're, they're not sure of. Um, and so, um, right off the bat, I could sort of see some commonalities with that getting with EO. So of course I've had, um, all the normal stuff like we all have, um, um, which, which EO, um, especially the forum kind of, uh, 
model has been really helpful. Um, but probably, um, you know, the one that comes to mind of the, you know, uh, the hardest issue I faced um, that, that um, I kind of worked through within my forum is, I think it's been about 10 years ago. Um, like all of us, like owner founders, um, you know, you're, you're trying to, uh, you know, have the business be less dependent on you. You know, the idea is the business could, you know, run without you, ideally. Um, I've not necessarily wanted to, uh, you know, ever leave the business. I, I'm, I'm, I like it. Uh, but um, in order to scale, you know, it's, it's of course, uh, best not to be totally dependent on, on any single point of failure. And so, um, so I thought about it for a while and I decided to, to take the plunge and, and hire a CEO to replace me. Um, and that took a lot of thought. Um, uh, and I'm, I'm a little bit, um, I'm not a big risk taker by nature. So I was, you know, carefully thought through it, researched it a decent amount. Um, and, and basically, uh, you know, it, it worked, it, it was it worked okay for the first couple months, but then you could see signs that it just wasn't the right thing. Well, before, let's take you before that point when you were deciding that you you needed some was there something else going on in your life that you wanted to spend more time and energy on or was there what yeah. was what what showed up for you that like ah, were you just frustrated with how things were going or did you feel like someone else could run it differently or what was the yeah that's a good question um so the original thought i had and some of this might just be like natural like life events and age is um one um uh uh, my wife, uh, Michelle and I, we had, we have two kids and back in the days before we had kids, you know, I was like the, uh, Paul nighters, you know, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> like, like you'd picture like in the, the, the tech world. Um, and I was still working pretty hard again, not necessarily unhappy, but, um, you know, I thought I didn't want to be like absentee, you know, for, for our kids. And so I wanted to kind of balance some of that out. Um, and I was thinking ahead a little bit. I think I was, um, I was maybe in my early forties when we kind of made this decision. And I was thinking, um, uh, it used to be like in your teens, twenties, and even thirties, like you're always thinking about the future, but it kind of felt like, okay, the future is now, like I'm getting old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, um, uh, and so I, I, I felt like I need to be more intentional about the future, just uh, even if it was, you know, for 20 years down the road. Uh, so that was kind of a catalyst for me, you know, thinking to make that decision. Um, and then the other thing, um, is we, uh, we had this idea. It wasn't, wasn't really mine. It was kind of a group thing within our, our company to start a nonprofit, um, that basically would be like a nonprofit, uh, IT support company that would provide free tech help to other that, nonprofits. That, it, it, make, it makes me nauseous to even hear that, 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 <laughs> the thought of that, like, give it free support away. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm sure it's a great idea though. Well, so I thought, okay, um, you know, uh, you know, I, I might be able to, um, we, we started this thing called geek cause. Um, and, uh, basically it was like, a the idea was have like a, a volunteer core of techies that, um, uh, that people could call that other nonprofits could, uh, you know, submit uh, issues to, and then the volunteer group would, would help resolve them. And so a little bit, I became interested in thinking, okay, I might be able to do that and like kind of slowly shift to that as my, uh, my full-time gig. Um, and so there was all those things combined that made me think, okay, this is, is worth giving a try, giving it a try, mm. but there was nothing terribly broken or, or wrong. Um, I tend to be a person who is um, uh, always trying to optimize things. I'm kind of a planner, uh, for better or for worse. Sometimes that's been good or bad. Um, and so, uh, uh, so you know, it was mainly around that. And so did you bring the, uh, that presentation to, to form? Yeah, yeah. So um, I uh, presented this to uh, the, the forum and... Um, and, you know, people um, in the forum, you know, everyone, as usual, kind of shared their experiences. Um, 
I think a couple people had tried in the past and also had some bumps um, and replacing themselves um, in the CEO role. Um, there was definitely a lot of folks that had tried to hire like a president or maybe a COO um, that uh, some went well, some, you know, didn't. So um, I took careful notes, just um, again, trying to gain any um, uh, lessons learned from, from peers uh, to see how best to do this. Mm -hmm. And, and what was, did you get coached during your presentation or was it? I did. Yeah. Um, uh, one of the, the folks in, in my forum uh, did some some coaching, um, and uh, that's a helpful process. Uh, uh, a couple for a couple reasons. One, uh, it helped make the presentation, you know, much more clear and, and efficient, um, and you know, kind of a good use of time for everyone. Um, and then um, also, um, the person coaching me. Um, uh, he was, uh, he asked like kind of good probing questions, almost, uh, you know, like you were asking like, okay, why do you want to do this? What's the, the reason for it? Um, is there a, a personal, you know, a reason, a business reason? Um, and so, um, and, and I think that's, uh, you know, uh, that was healthy. You know, it's crazy. I, I feel like I've gotten more value out of a coaching exercise than the actual presentation. Because no one's asking, you know, it's like the first moment in time that someone's like asking you a question that needs to be asked. Right. You've, you've been going through all this in your head. Yeah. And so someone, someone's finally asking you a question. You go, oh, wow. I, e either, yeah, I understand what I'm trying to do or I haven't thought about that. Maybe or That or, would be helpful. Or you're in a situation <laughs> where you think you're doing it for one reason and it's totally separate. Like what I heard out of that was, it's kind of about your kids. You probably, did you, you know, for me, it's like when you start recognizing how fast they grow up and you're like, what happened last year? Well, I was doing this project and I was working all the time. It's like, wow, that is not something I feel proud of mm -hmm. to be away from the kids. I think uh, at its core, that was it. Um, uh, and um, uh, I didn't, when uh, our kids, we have two boys, uh, Jake and Max, and they're um, just a year and a half apart. So the infant stage, I struggled <laughs> pretty badly with. Oh, I think we all do. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't even care about zero to two. <laughs> yeah, I, so. I got work to go do. I, <laughs> that was it exactly. Like, I kind of be like, it's actually easier going to... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, to I'm work honest. than it yeah. is to uh, take care of the kids. And my wife was working full time as well. And we were both kind of found that it was it was uh, very, very hectic. But then as they got out of that, it kind of got to be where like, hey, you got these like two little friends you're just hanging out with all the time. And um, it just became totally fun. Mm. Um, the, the, the kid part. Um, and so uh, so some of it was feeling responsibility to be uh, around them more. And then um, some of it was just wanting to do that. Just It was just fun to, to do that kind of thing. Um, so uh, um, uh, Eric and I have talked in the past. We were talking earlier about um, uh, we're both uh, drummers, although I'm uh, not a very good one. And Eric, I think you're actually actually pretty, pretty qualified, pretty good. But um, our older kid, Jake, is um, he got into playing the drums when he was maybe six or so. And so we started doing a lot of things around music together around that. Um, um, and so, you know, that was starting to, uh, you know, be exciting and take up time, but it was time I wanted to spend. Um, and then, you know, you, you know, uh, our younger one who also is, is a pretty good musician, um, Max, he was kind of doing a lot for fun. Um, unfortunately, his hobby he took up was parkour. I don't know if you guys know of that. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, it's where you're like jumping off the side of a building and rolling or running up a wall. In that, I tried to do some. I thought maybe I could learn how to do this. <laughs> but I was like, Max, could you just pick something else that like your dad could do with you? But but all those kind of kid activities, that was definitely a, a, a core. Um, and um, actually, Robert, as you were saying, like, um, for whatever reason, time starts kind of going by. Um, it seems like <laughs> faster and faster. Yeah, it's, a, it's those memories that show up in Facebook, too. It's like from a year ago, three years uh, yeah, ago. Yeah, you're like, like whoa, yeah. I, I have to change things, which is, it's actually probably the favorite, the most favorite thing I have on 
Facebook is the, it's the recognition that time is moving forward that makes you stop and go, well, am I doing the things that I'm supposed to be doing? Do I need to change? Yeah. It puts things in perspective. Um, uh, you know, uh, yeah, time, um, you know, becomes more and more valuable, you know, as it gets shorter for all of us. Um, and like, what do they say? Like, uh, father time is undefeated, you know, so you have to kind of, <laughs> my dad just turned 85 and we were talking the other day and he said, uh, do you know how old I was when I retired? And I said, I think it's how old I am right now. <laughs> and oh it, no. It, yeah. Ooh, he said, I retired at, rubbing something in. <laughs> retired at 55. And I'm like, I'm a long way from retirement. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So take us to that moment that, uh, it's, it, you feel this urge to spend more time with family, to, to hire somebody. Was, yes. was, was the vision that, that uh, you would work on this non-for-profit and spend some time there and then just, um, just get a check every month? Is that the, was that yeah, the plan? Yeah, so um, I was sort of envisioning that I would um, work on the non-for-profit non um, idea, Geek Cause, um, which I'd already started doing a little bit. So that was, of course, you know, I was already juggling a little bit, uh, probably too much between the, the Ativa stuff and Geek Cause. Um, uh, and, but, uh, the, the idea was I would, uh, focus on the nonprofit and, um, just simply have more time, uh, you know, doing, doing stuff with family, um, and spending time with the kids before, um, they got, um, uh, you know, uh, old enough where they just graduated, uh, from high school and moved on. <laughs> so the decision was to hire someone. So how did that go? T tell me what the steps you took and then. Yeah. So, um. Uh, so basically the first thing I did, this took a little bit of time, um, uh, uh, you know, we put some, we put, uh, the person that I was, you know, ended up being the CEO, um, in charge of our network and IT services group, um, just to kind of have them have a little bit of a leadership kind of position, um, you know, just to kind of test the waters and for, for both of us to, to make sure it was the right fit. Um, and uh, so our company, we're like, you know, total computer nerds, like, you know, doing consulting. So we have our, um, uh, a few groups, we have our IT services group, which is doing uh, IT support and managed services and just anything, um, cloud related, that type of thing. And then we have our software development group doing custom programming. Um, and then we have our technical project management group. Um, so we kind of have these, you know, kind of to give the context. And so our network group, um, we, we, we put him there to start with. Um, and that went okay. Um, uh, it, it didn't, it, we improved some, I think, uh, so I think he was doing a good job, but, um, you know, it was hard to tell if it was just like, you know, uh, you know, changed everything. Um, but it was a step forward. Um, and, uh, so that's how we started and we did that for about maybe six months or so, uh, before um, I decided to, uh, you know, take the plunge and, and, and make him essentially the CEO. Um, and so that was the, the path. Yeah. And so he's, he has the reins of the company now. And did, did he have a, a well-defined vision for the company where, where you wanted to take it or was, was it a mixture of his vision? Yeah. So um, I think, you know, uh, and, you know, when I say this didn't work out, it wasn't a you know, total catastrophe, but it just ended up being, you know, we had to kind of reverse things out. Um, and I think um, I always look at almost anything in the business as ultimately it's on me. Like if you're like the sole owner, like I'm the one who decided to do this, even if it's the, the person's not doing, you know, what you thought they were going to do. Um or uh, any mistakes when it comes down to it, yeah, you know, it's your name on the lawsuit. Right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. So, yeah. um, so, um, uh, so I think, you know, looking, trying to look at myself, um, and where I could have improved is, um, I think the vision, like the mathematical, the financial part, there was some clarity around that. And, um, uh, I think we started with the roles fairly well defined, but, um, uh, one thing that, um, in hindsight, I've been learning from actually reading all the, the EOS, uh, you know, books that, that you and I talked about, Robert, mm -hmm. um, is, um, it was more the soft skills and the alignment, you know, just on the culture. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And that's where things kind of uh, started getting out of whack. Um, and, and that's where uh, it took me a bit to realize, um, you know, what to do or how to fix that. So, Yeah, the m- most common thing for people that are transitioning to having, you know, go, going from the leader to someone else leading is the letting go process, the, the actual letting go. And uh, we don't have a lot of practice. It, that's not something you go to school for. Yeah, yeah. No, it would have been nice to... Uh, <laughs> have like a class, you know, right. on how to do this or, uh, um, uh, and I think going through this process, uh, definitely there'd be a, a, a path I would do, you know, some things I would do differently this time that, that hopefully would, would work. But, um, but yeah, basically, um, we didn't, we didn't struggle so much externally. We were still doing all the work and trying to keep the clients happy and that type of thing. But internally, um, I think for the first time, um, really in the history of our company, we had like a little bit of sort of, uh, it was like office politics starting to happen. Mm. Um, and part of the reason I even wanted to have like my own business, um, you know, was just to have like, Hey, just a bunch of nice people working together, you know, all supporting one another. Um, you know, people, uh, comfortable if, if they make a mistake, not feeling ashamed, um, and, and, you know, having, uh, each other's back. Um, and so, uh, that started to rise a little bit, um, and the letting go part, um, that was an interesting challenge. So I knew that was something like, okay, like, you know, all the, the EO type founders, like, you know, it's all like wired into like, you know, this is our baby. Um, and so, um, I tried to, you know, I, I stopped coming into the office. I was started, you know, working, um, at coffee shops and, uh, from home a bit to try to give some space. Um, but I found myself a little bit in, um, it was hard to figure out what to do when, um, employees would contact me directly. Mm. Um, and these are all people, uh, we've been fortunate. We have like a lot of folks who have, uh, we've been working together 15, 20 years or sometimes more. Um, and you know, so we're, we're pretty good friends as well as coworkers. And, you know, I would try to redirect them, you know, back to respect the structure we had tried to set up. But, uh, but at the same time, I, I didn't feel like I could just say, Hey, my door's closed. You know, I'm, I'm not going to talk to you at all. And that's where I think things got fuzzy. Um, and, uh, and again, that could be, um, I think everyone had good intent. Uh, that could be some on me. Um, but, uh, but when I started seeing that I didn't want, I, I just wasn't comfortable with people not being happy or being, uh, stressed or, or employees. Isn't that just, just a reoccurring issue that we all have is like, we, we want everyone happy and the, the, the work isn't always going to be stuff to make you happy. I mean, it's, it's hard. It's yeah. just work. It's work is work. And, and we try to tiptoe around real work. Uh, it always gets us lighter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, overall. And yeah, that's an interesting thing. Cause like, you know, you're in, in a business, I guess you're, you know, it's hard for uh, the, the CEO or owner, I guess any level of leadership is, you know, you're trying to, you want to keep the, the clients and your customers happy and you want to keep, you know, your employees and coworkers happy. So you have like kind of two constituents um, and, you know, it's a hard thing to do, you know, um, across the board, people have different needs and, um, you know, some people like uh, more freedom, some people like more structure. Um, and so it's, it's tricky to do. Um, but I definitely, um, did not want, you know, um, I've liked having, you know, a relatively small, medium sized business that, um, uh, you know, people aren't losing sleep at night, you know, like worried about, you know, what's going to happen the next day. Um, and so, uh, for better, or for worse, that's kind of in my style. Um, and, and when that started going away just internally, that's when I could, could feel kind of a you know, a, a, a decision point, you know, is this, was this the right move or not? Yeah. So you, you ultimately make a decision for letting go. Right. right. And then now yeah. we're into a new decision of, uh, okay. <laughs> How do I navigate this? Was this a new topic that you brought to your form? Like, all right, I hired the person yes. and, uh, things aren't going what I expected. Yeah. Yeah. So I found it interesting in the form experience. Um, uh, 
you know, because when someone presents, uh, you know, especially if there's some sort of conflict or, you know, um, you're only hearing their side of the story, you know, so, uh, <laughs> so, you know, really? so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which is totally fair. You know, it's, uh, sure. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, w- which feels kind of good when you're doing that actually in some ways, but, um, uh, you know, I, 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 so when I presented on this, I tried to, again, be self-reflective on, you know, um, you know, kind of seeing both sides as best I could. But, um, and, but when it came down to it, um, you know, the, the issues I was describing, it was kind of unanimous, um, which also helped me that like, Hey, this is just not working. Like you're not gonna be able to fix this. Um, this is not going to end up like a year from now any better. Mm. Um, which, um, I think, um, somewhat intuitively uh, with a lot of things, um, we all will kind of know like, Hey, I'm just not going to, it's hard to change another person. Um, and you know, and and, you know, sometimes just things just aren't the right fit or don't click. And, and, and it's, there's always this hope like, Oh, I'll, I'll be able to change this. But, um, uh, but I've never, it's pretty hard to do that. And I don't know that it ever really happens. And so I kind of knew that, but I needed the forum to kind of remind me of that. And they didn't remind me, um, by again, giving any advice. Everyone just had their own story of like, yeah, I struggle with, you know, this person who I hired to do this. And I, I tried to prompt them that, Hey, this was made, maybe you could change the way you're doing this and that. And I just never could get it to work. And after hearing everyone go on the table, you know, sharing that, um, uh, you know, I realized, you know, I probably need to, to just, uh, you know, get back to our core, you know, the way we were, you know, a year before. And so the, the, the decision was to let this person go or did they? Yeah, it was a mutual, out? uh, you know, decision. Um, so, um, but yeah, basically, yeah. And so, um, uh, I jumped back in and, um, uh, and you know, that, uh, was not that difficult to do really. You know, of course I've been already doing this for, uh, years and years on end. And, uh, so that was, that was not too hard. Uh, the geek cause thing, which I had started to ramp up. Um, we ended up, um, uh, it's a very similar model to a nonprofit in town called hands on Nashville, where they have volunteers that they recruit to do you know, different types of work. And so, um, we ended up sort of, uh, partnering with hands on Nashville to manage geek cause. And that ended up being a great decision because they're there, of course, much better at running that and doing that than I, I had no experience running a nonprofit. Um, and so that was neat to see that actually kind of as a side thing kind of grow. Yeah. W- was, was I a part of that? Because I helped my Nana out with her. <laughs> computer issues all the time. I could have registered with you, maybe even had a tax write-off. Is that possible? I've been doing this for free, so surely there's a way to... If you were, as long as you were like a nonprofit that, you know, was committed to helping, you know, um, you know, elderly people, you know, you know, understand technology more, um, then you could have called Geek Cause. I I need to do, I need to do that from now on because I'm still doing it. It's definitely a (laughs) write-off. Yeah, definitely a write-off. But let's talk about that experience for a minute because the old, at the end of the day, do you still have a desire to hire somebody? Because this is a common challenge that all of us navigate. I have navigated several times wanting to bring someone in and I'd hire them and and I, I could never fully, and then we get gun shy when it doesn't go the way we anticipated. So we don't do it. We just, you know, you probably had a sense of relief getting back into the seat. I did. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I, I actually enjoy, I, I like work. Um, uh, I, I really enjoy the people I work with, um, uh, amongst both, um, my coworkers and clients, you know, you, um, uh, you know, uh, we were saying before we, we started like, uh, you know, work is not all about business. I mean, there's a, a definitely a personal side, there's relationships and, and friendships and, um, um, and so I actually like, a lot of it. Um, and so it felt actually fine and good to get back, you know, just kind of, um, and I kind of told everyone, Hey, I, you know, I messed this up. <laughs> uh, you know, it was the wrong fit and, you know, we tried that. It didn't work. Um, let's learn from it and move on. And so, you know, this is a long time ago now. I think it's, um, yeah, good. I think I mentioned, uh, I think it's a, about 10 years ago. Um, and so, uh, 
So it's not really been until this last really few months that I've been thinking about um, the future um, uh, and how to optimize around that um, with respect to kind of this topic. So uh, uh, we've like focused really hard, you know, like we're a services company. So we're focused really hard on the delivery, like just doing the best possible job, you know, you can for your clients. And so, um, and of course, um, no one's perfect with that, but I'd felt this, you know, with each year we've gotten better and better to like, you know, you know, it's kind of like we're the best we've been at that. Um, and, and the people we have in place leading the network group and the software group, um, the project management group, um, uh, I felt really good about. And, and so, um, so just recently, really probably around the holidays, I started thinking a little bit about, all right. Now, like, you know, we have the delivery kind of rolling. Um, and so let me think about kind of the back office and the management. Like, how can we optimize that? And I'm definitely one of, I've kind of likened it to a software, you know, where you have like version one, version 1.1, 1. 1, version two, three, for years on end, you know. What version are you? <laughs> we're like, a, I, think, I think we actually have, we actually track a version. I think we're version 22. <laughs> Point, point 0.5, I think right that now. That is a great way to do that. Yeah. And, and, and like, I could see have that, like, in the operating manual. That 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 is so, Tammy, that is so <laughs> version 10. <laughs> and we've moved versions. You have not yeah. operated. Yeah, so yet. it's just like like a, a, a you know, software or an operating system. You know, you, you keep on tweaking and changing. Um, and that's one thing I've liked about technology is um, it's it's hard on one hand because you have you know you're, you're never really done. You have to keep on learning new things, and and the whole industry changes, and the the what's popular in the tech world changes. Different platforms, programming languages, and um, but um, I've I've liked that part because you're never bored. And so the same way with the business, thinking of it as those versions, I've like thought, um, all right, yeah, we got to keep on like thinking of like you know, what can we do next? And, um, and there's that balance between like striving, but never arriving. Like, you know, we are just driving yourself nuts. Like, you know, I'm, I'm never content, but overall I've erred on the side of, um, figuring out, um, just always trying to optimize change with the times. Um, any lessons learned from either ourselves or watching other people, um, or from uh, fellow EO folks, um, you know, trying to take that, and, and, and tweak it. So, um, around the holidays, I started thinking about, okay, like management back office, how can we tweak and improve this? Um, and then, um, uh, with that, I've sometimes had some pride and almost like being the contrarian, like inventing something like, Oh, we're going to invent this new management style. It's, <laughs> you know, that's going to take off around the world <laughs> and, you know, I'll write a book. Um, <laughs> and so I, I was thinking, okay, maybe, you know, there's, there's, you know, some things that, that uh, we could do along those lines to, that, that, that I, we could just figure out ourselves. And then I started reading uh, about, you know, various other management styles, about the, the EOS uh, stuff and the Rockefeller habits. And uh, that seemed like that was an easier path because it was kind of ready made to go. So now we've been kind of, uh, so the main decision lately has been kind of digging into the EOS side, which we're, we're just at the very beginning of. Yeah. And it's so amazing because, uh, you know, EO founded by Vern Harnish, um, had, uh, a, a, uh, scaled up was his book and had a coaching group and hired Gino Wickman who would write EOS. I mean, write traction. It's just, it's funny how EO is so connected to like the framework that we all are kind of evolving. And over the last 20 something years, the, the framework has evolved with lots of experiences. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and kind of researching kind of the what's next, um, and, and, you know, how to improve the, the, the kind of management, you know, uh, uh, kind of approach and, 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 and structure, um, yeah, I like, you know, I started researching all these different styles and, um, uh, like I think I read, I can't remember the name of the book. It was about Netflix, you know, their style of management, very loose, you know, very self-sufficient. Um, you know, then, um, you know, you'll, you'll read about, um, in another company that, you know, is totally opposite, both, you know, pretty successful places. Um, and I'd actually, uh, 
this kind of struck me, although again, maybe it was obvious to everyone else, but um, I went um, just, uh, I don't know why we did this. A friend of mine just last minute was like, do you want to go to the Berkshire Hathaway um, uh, shareholders meeting in Omaha, Nebraska? Um, and, you know, this is a friend of mine from childhood and we've, we've been always thinking of crazy business ideas since we were like three years old, you know, back and forth, <laughs> never having done any of them, but just, you know, kind of thinking about them. And so we had this, both had this kind of interest in this. So we were like, I was like, yeah, that might be kind of neat. Warren, you know, is getting pretty old, Yeah, <laughs> you know, maybe it would be neat to go there and do that in person. And, um, so we went out there just for kind of a pretty quick trip, but he was describing his management style, um, you know, which is very hands off. Um, and, you know, I think like the, the corporate office for this gigantic place is like, you know, 20 people or less, you know, in Omaha, Nebraska. So very opposite of what you think. There's not, not, not a lot of processes in place. Mm. Um, and so I kind of was thinking about that as um, when I was leaving there and I'm like, all right, um, there is no exact perfect system. You know, it just, there's, there's multiple systems that could work. Um, uh, and, and there's, there's not one you have to just research, research and settle on. You just, you know, have to kind of find the one that, that kind of fits, uh, what I guess would make you happy. Um, and that maybe at least for me has, has at least been, you know, somewhat proven. Um, and so that kind of quickly, um, uh, led me to just make a decision on that. Yeah. So, well, let me ask you this. So if you could go back to, as we settle down, what, adv what, um, not advice, but what, uh, experience share, if you had, if you could go back, would have helped? Um, on the topic of the, the hiring a CEO. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, a couple things. One, um, I think I would have spent a lot longer with, uh, whoever you were going to hire, um, in a leadership role, but not in the CEO role. Mm -hmm. So we, we just did in about six months or so. Um, and I think, uh, in hindsight, I think it would have been good to even have like, well, for me, even like a couple of years, mm. cause it's such a critical yeah. decision. Um, and you know, you, you obviously don't want to make it, don't want to make a mistake. And I, I think in hindsight, it would be worth the time just to, to be patient with that. Um, the other, uh, uh, thing I thought about is, um, uh, the soft skills, um, uh, around, I guess, management style would be important to be very aligned. Um, and at first I was the opposite of that. I was thinking we need some like yin yang, like, you know, to have a little bit of both. But I think that, um, I think too much of that, um, you know, could just, just cause confusion. And so, um, I think aligning those soft skills, um, uh, and, and then also I think it's important, um, I think this is hard to find, um, you know, uh, when there's, um, I guess in the EOS world, the visionary, but you know, the world of the time for me, you know, I'm the owner mm. still, um, is, uh, uh, you know, I think having a balance between, um, being able to debate things, um, and, and having a, a, a way to do that. And, um, and kind of embrace disagreement, but come, you know, basically present a united front. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. In, in that 90 minute, you know, meeting with your team every week, you want to have a little bit of heat, a little bit of friction. You want yeah. that there, but at the end of the day, like this is what we've made a decision on and, um, you expect your leaders to follow through and carry that united yes. front and without that united front, you really have nothing. Yeah, I think that's it. I think that's, uh, um, uh, critical. And I think that can be done, um, you know, with other people, you know, um, that happens a lot, you know, it's just whatever reason that, uh, that didn't click with us. Um, uh, and again, I try to look at my role or anything. So it's, you know, two, two people, you know, no, no one's, uh, you know, you know, perfectly right or wrong. Um, but that just wasn't working. It was different styles. And then the last thing is I've been guilty of this. Um, I've, I've tried to improve on this is 
um, generally, you know, I'm a pretty loyal person and I never, you know, really want to hurt anyone. So we've rarely let that many people go over all this 30 years. Um, but, um, like we said earlier, generally it seems like when it's not working, it's probably not, it didn't seem like it's going to get better. Um, uh, at, at whatever level. And so I think I should have moved more quickly to, uh, once I kind of felt that gut feeling, Yeah, he said, okay, like, you know, maybe this just wasn't the right thing. It's okay. You know, we all make mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so looking back, you know, 10 years removed from that decision, what does your role look like now? And, and, uh, w w what does the future look like? You, st yeah. you said you're starting to make some decisions about yeah, what the future yeah. looks like. Yeah. So, um, uh, so basically, um, we, uh, kind of built a, a little bit of a structure, um, uh, to where we, we have, um, well, we carefully hired and, and really good leaders that were all real aligned that lead our, our kind of various groups. Um, and so, uh, so that has taken me, um, that's been pretty nice. <laughs> I mean, um, generally, um, uh, you know, that's taken me out of a lot of the, the, the daily grind type stuff already. Um, and so you almost, it almost is like you didn't have to have another CEO to you get confused with titles. Yeah. You know, often we like think that this title is going to give me an outcome that, that I agree. I'm trying to. And, and it's really maybe not. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's, um, you know, it can be some arbitrary, you know, the, the title, it's all sort of how you define what you're doing is more of the, um, and so, um, uh, so, you know, fast forward, we, we kind of, uh, focused on that, on, on having the right people in the right seats for, for the delivery of the services. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and so, uh, you know, they've been cranking away, doing a good job. And I think I usually, um, you know, basically I'd see myself as there to, uh, almost like I work for them, like to support them, you know, to help them. Um, and so that's been the role I've been playing. Um, uh, and then, you know, the, the, the future, um, I still want to have something that, um, uh, you know, will scale, you know, without, uh, you know, it depends on any one person and we're getting there. We've gotten more and more there with that. Um, uh, and it's not just me, there's other people too, in a small company that, that, you know, there's dependency, but that's been kind of a lot of the focus is to, to have that, um, just for, uh, um, it's kind of like the same with technology again. Like you want like redundancy, like, you know, if you're have one server, you want a backup server. Yep. <laughs> and so the same way thinking of it, you know, as a, a company. So, JJ, I appreciate you coming and joining us on the decision. Uh, if you are listening with your ears and you, this resonates with you as a situation where you'd like to hire a CEO, you'd like to hire somebody that can help so you can let go, maybe spend more time with family, how would one reach out to JJ? Um, so, um, I just like uh, the tech part, I've uh, loved learning and talking about the business side of things. Um, even more so, um, in the past 10, 10 years or so. Um, and so, uh, uh, anyone, uh, feel free to, to email me, um, anytime I'm, I'm glad to, to share, um, anything I've learned. Um, and it's just, uh, JJ Rosen, R O S E N at Atiba, A T I B A dot com. So JJ Rosen at Atiba dot com. Thank you, Eric. Thanks for joining us once again. And that is The Decision from Nashville EO. Thanks for listening to The Decision Podcast by Nashville EO. We'll see you again next time. And be sure to click subscribe to get future episodes.